Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the member for Viewford South, the former Prime Minister, found this strange, I don't know why, that I had agreed with many things he said, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, two weeks ago, I had a, a discussion with a member of the FSRE. And I mentioned to them their need to be vigilant, their need to ensure that things go correctly. But I also mentioned to them that they must understand that they live in a small country and they cannot import locks, stock, and barrel what they get from the developed world because someone put it in some regulations for them. And I said to them I would continue to support them, but they had to understand the, diff the peculiarities of a small society and the peculiarities of living in our region, Mr. Speaker. And we spoke about the, the, the law as it reads to cooperatives. In putting together the cabinet, I put cooperatives under the Ministry of Commerce instead of agriculture, where it was before, just to emphasize the importance of cooperatives to St. Lucia, the importance of cooperatives to the economic development of St. Lucia. So I will not support any measure that will muzzle these cooperatives because somebody from outside says that must happen. Having said so, I think because of the volume of transactions that cooperatives handle, there ought to be some level of, scrut of scrutiny, some level of oversight, but not to any level that would tie their hands, that would stop them from dealing with little people, that would stop them from having the flexibility, that would afford them the, the flexibility to do what people want, what, what real people want, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there is a, a trend, and the member from FIFA South is right, to constantly diminish the role of elected politicians in that region. It appears once you get elected and you get into government, you become a criminal, you become dishonest, you can't make decisions, and you must be controlled. So people who never face what we face, who never have to, to go to a constituency office tomorrow and f speak to 50, 60 people and asking you for all kinds of things, Mr. Speaker, they believe that you must be subject to their whims and fancies because they happen to go to some school or the other. But Mr. Speaker, you have to make a serious judgment call and you have to decide what, how far you can reach because if not, you get punished by the powers that be. I joke the AG about NAMLOC. Then there's, there's blacklisting. Then there's corresponding banking. Then there's a lot of many to tie your hands, to handcuff you, Mr. Speaker, because someone believes that you cannot go, that you mustn't go that far without control, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I made the point about elected officials, Mr. Speaker. We are called PEPs, P-E-P, -E politically exposed persons, Mr. Speaker. And when you are politically exposed persons, Mr. Speaker, you are almost treated, you and your family, as if you are an outlaw. Yeah. As if you are an outlaw. You can't open a bank account, you can't deposit money in the bank, you can't put your salary in. I, somebody had been pestering me for a bank, from a bank, Mr. Speaker, because I was a pep. She said to me, I must show her proof of my salary. I said, my salary is in the estimates. I need to get a letter from my employer on my salary. I said, my employer is the people of Cassius East. These are the things, Mr. Speaker, you have to undergo when you are 
in public life, Mr. Speaker. And it gets worse and worse and worse, Mr. Speaker. Because apart from having to deal with opposition, and these days we have very, very, we have abnormal opposition. Apart from having to deal, huh? you take offense to abnormal opposition? Opposition that behaves abnormally. You have to deal, Mr. Speaker, with all these pressures. And that, that is why this Cooperative Societies Act, we took so much scrutiny because we had to strike a balance, a balance between oversight, a balance between scrutiny, and a balance between not allowing us to forget the ethos of the cooperative movement, Mr. Speaker. So it's a constant battle. It's a constant battle that you have to fight, Mr. Speaker, to get the balance. But unfortunately, some public officials don't seem to have the empathy to realize what you have to go through, Mr. Speaker, and how you have to do it if you want to implement policies that benefit the people who elected you, Mr. Speaker. And the sad thing is that they don't explain to the people. You are the ones left to explain to the people. It's not your business, not their business. That's the, that's the law. You go and sell it. Because in the final analysis, what's important is not the name behind Prime Minister, it's just Prime Minister or Minister. The name behind already matter. So, Mr. Speaker, I support this this act, but I'm speaking in general terms as sort of how you have to strike a balance between what the powers that be want you to do and what is relevant in a small society, Mr. Speaker. We have the, we have that that issue for discussion in the insolvency bill. We have it a while ago in the money laundering bill, Mr. Speaker. People, regular vendors, regular taxi drivers, go, go to the bank for 1,000 US. They want to ask them where you get it from, who, who sent it for you. <laughs> where, what kind of business you in. All kinds of regular people, Mr. Speaker, they, they call it compliance. So Mr. Speaker, it's a very difficult, it's a very difficult task that we have to, it's a very difficult task for us as elected officials, Mr. Speaker. Because in the final analysis, the people that you, that have to elect you, do not understand what you have to go through if you have to implement the policies that will make them, I satisfy them, Mr. Speaker. There's something called procurement. You know, procurement, Mr. Speaker. And when you start, like this morning we had a thing from, from the CDB, 2022, it happened in 2024. Procure, Mr. Speaker, to procure, if you want to build a wall that, 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 that the hurricane just threw out full on, you have to have, they say, you have, the Minister of Finance has the authority to do a direct award, but he hasn't got the authority to make the award. So some civil servant will have to make the award for you because in, his, in the back of his mind, he figures it's something you're doing that's wrong. So whereas the wall is falling and the people are screaming, some civil servant tells you, you must have the procurement procedure because the World Bank tells you, you must do that, Mr. Speaker. The World Bank, the person the World Bank, they even know where Itang is. Nor does he care because it is not within his, his, his his, his lifetime, Mr. Speaker, he doesn't understand it. And when these officials come to solution, Mr. Speaker, I always say to my officials, do not fall lock, stock, and barrel for what these guys tell you. Because these guys don't understand the peculiar circumstances under which we have to administer these small islands. Small islands, 170,000 people, 100,000 people, 50,000 people, they want to implement the same rules that they have for Egypt and for these large economies, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I really hope that we should, we carry come, can come together in a more serious way to deal with these outside influences on our country. It ties your hand, Mr. Speaker, 
We go in, in, in a few minutes, on tomorrow, oh, when you come back to Parliament, we have to do something called money laundering. Then, l l later, later on, we have to do insolvency. You must pass it, because if you don't pass it, you're going to be, you're going to be, um, you're going to be in problems, and you'll be penalized, Mr. Speaker. So I support that, 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 that piece of legislation, but I understand that most of the times, these laws are passed to control, to control these small islands, to put them in a specific mode so that the powers that be can continue their dominance, Mr. Speaker. So as I support it, I had to make these, these comments, Mr. Speaker, because this is how I feel, this is what I say to my tech all the time, that a lot of these things that you're implementing were not made for us, it was just made to control us, Mr. Speaker. And to diminish, to diminish, to diminish all the time, the influence and the power of elected officials. Elected officials become, all of a sudden, because you become elected, everything drops. But sometimes, I must say both sides of the coin, sometimes elected officials cause that on their own. By the way, they behave. They cause that, they cause people to treat us like that because of the way they themselves behave, Mr. Speaker. So I must always see both sides of the coin. So Mr. Speaker, it's a sad situation, a situation that the member for Viewfort South always speaks about, but the problem is, what is the solution? Do you exclude yourself and get punished, or do you try to find a way to follow what they call the rules for you to, for you to survive? So you can't get blacklisted, you can't get all it. Mr. Speaker, the, the, the AG comes to cabinet with a whole set of positions. The same people that tell you your civil service is overburdened, you have sent people home, a whole set of positions, Mr. Speaker. What do you call it? Inspection, what do you call it? Huh? A whole, a whole office. You understand? All the time. And in but the same people I tell you, we have too many civil servants. Send clerks home. Send this and that home. Send you, you, have, you, have, you have enough policemen. You have too many policemen. You, you, you have too many teachers. The same people I tell you that. They give you a long story. To a student, yeah, your student teacher ratio is too, is too low. You have too many teachers. You spend too much money on social programs. They give you a whole set of people to employ to pay massive salaries, they say, to control money laundering. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I thank you.